Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased today to have uh, with us a former student uh, from the Rural Planning and Development Program, Kelsey Lang. Hello, Kelsey. Hello. Uh, Kelsey uh, graduated, I think it was in 2014, and many of you will have heard Kelsey's story because I often tell this to people who are coming in and thinking of coming to our program. And the story of Kelsey is coming to study with us, uh, coming from British Columbia, studied farmland preservation with myself, and then took a job with a local municipality just outside of Guelph. And the next thing I know, Kelsey's working in housing with the New York City Planning Department. And she may uh, tell us a little bit more about that story, but it's, it's this example of folks who can take the skills that they graduate with through our program and apply them in many different contexts. So welcome, Kelsey. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And, uh, and in particular today, we're going to explore the theme of working internationally, working outside of Canada. And uh, Kelsey, over much of the last uh, four or five years uh, since she graduated, has, uh, has been working in the U.S. in uh, two or three different locations. So maybe just to start with that, I'll ask uh, Kelsey, if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about your background and your story that has taken you uh, to, the, to the southern side of the Canadian border. Sure. Yeah, so you had it right. Um, came from B.C. specifically to Guelph to study agriculture and rural planning. Um, and after graduating, I worked for the township of Guelph, Aramosa, just outside of Guelph for about two and a half years. Um, during that time, I also was subcontracted by the municipality to MHBC Planning, which is a consulting firm in Kitchener, Waterloo. So got a little bit of both sides of the coin there. And then um, personal reasons took me to New York, where I worked for about a year and a half for New York City's Housing Preservation and Development Department. And there I was working on Hurricane Sandy recovery programs. Mm -hmm. And um, it was part of the federal recovery and the city's implementation of that. So there's a lot of project management that went on, um, working with different departments and different resources um, to facilitate helping people recover from the hurricane situation and move on to their next steps. And then what did we do with that land that was left over? Some of it became uh, wetland, some of it became affordable housing, lots of different things there. And then again, the personal move took us to California where we settled in the Bay Area. Uh, I first worked in the city of San Jose for just about four months. That wasn't a great fit, but while I was there, I worked on a specific area plan around transportation oriented development for a new um, BART, which is like the subway equivalent station that was being opened. And then now for the last year and a half, I've worked for San Mateo County. Um, this is county covers basically between um, San Francisco and San Jose, all of the unincorporated areas. So there's a good mix of urban areas. Some of my projects are 170 unit new apartment buildings, um, and then a good mix of rural issues. I have another project, which is legalizing a greenhouse out on a farm that was built illegally. Mm. Um, and sort of everything in between, resource management, some quarry issues, a little bit of everything. Oh. I'm, in, I'm interested just in, in, in marketing yourself and in, in terms of how you approach those positions uh, in, in, in those different locations. So when you first went to New York City and you applied for the job, um, was it a difficult fit or, or was it, no, just Kelsey's great, we'll hire her. How did that work out? <laughs> um, so one thing I will say in the U.S. is that each state and sometimes even cities have different ways they can hire people. <clears throat> so in New York State in particular, um, they have exams that are held every so often. <clears throat> it's usually every like three to four years. And that exam is tied to a position type. So you would take an exam for a planner when it comes up, like maybe planner one, two, three, whatever it may be. And then as job openings come up, um, they will call you from that list. So from the exam, you're scored, you know, highest to lowest, and then they work down that list to call for positions. Those are the permanent positions. In special circumstances, like Hurricane Sandy Recovery, they create temporary positions, mm. uh, which you don't have to take those exams for. 
So in my case, I got lucky and there were some temporary positions open. Um, and by temporary, they could go on for years because my manager was in that position for six years. Um, it just meant that you didn't have to have qualified under this exam system to be able to take it. And, and then when you uh, left New York City and went to San Jose and then to San, I guess, uh, San Mateo County, if I got that pronounced properly. So when you, what was, the, again, the, the same kind of process in terms of employment? Or? No, there it was much more similar to Ontario where mm -hmm. there would be a job posting and then you would apply for that posting and then um, go through the interview process, which was usually like a short skill testing sort of session and then um, in-person interviews. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the work in New York City, uh, how, how was that? Was that uh, a, 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 a interesting, cool space to work in or was it, did it come with its frustrations or? How was that? Yeah, it was really interesting. Um, a very unique experience, and hopefully they don't have to go through it again with any more hurricanes. Um, but it was really interesting to take sort of the federal policies, which are designed for the US as a whole, um, and figure out how to apply them in New York City, which is a very unique space in the US as a whole. Mm. And then working with all the different departments and interfacing. Um, one of the big contrasts from my experience at Guelph Hermosa is Guelph Hermosa was very small. And so you were very close to everyone. You were close to the management, you were close to the politicians, you were close, close to the public. Where in New York City, the bureaucracy of it is so large that my department was... I think it was like 8,000 people worked in housing preservation wow. and development. Wow. So you were very far from anyone else. And uh, even just working through other areas of the department, you know, required you to find someone who knew someone to introduce you. And yeah. uh, so it was very if, different. If, if, if you were to compare Guelph Hermosa to New York City and, and the world was an even playing field, which one of them would you choose to work in? That's a hard question. Um, I'd say my current position is fairly similar to Guelph Hermosa in terms of the vibe. Um, mm -hmm. It's a smaller department. There's, um, I think there's about 20 planners altogether. And it's really focused on uh, like the, the public interaction and experience, um, customer service wise which was similar to my experience in Guelph Hermosa. Mm -hmm. uh, where New York City though, it was like things happened very quickly and there was always something going on and always something interesting. So it was like a really uh, stimulating place to work. Mm -hmm. And working for New York City covered the entire geography of the city or was it specific just to the hurricane affected areas, which I assume are you know, along the ocean or the bay? Yeah, it was focused on the hurricane specific okay. areas. So mostly in Staten Island, Brooklyn and Queens. Okay, okay. And then uh, moving to San Jose. Uh, and again, you mentioned that you weren't there too, too long, but found a better fit then with the San Mateo County. Uh, any key observations from those two geographies? I think in terms of American planning, California is the most similar to Canadian planning. Mm. Um, there is the most planning legislation and regulations in California. Um, they have something called CEQA, which is, they call environmental review. And it's similar to the level of development review that's done in Ontario. Okay. It's separate sort of process that happens within the planning process um, and is often subject to lawsuits with <laughs> controversial projects but it looks at the similar things that we would look at in Ontario under the Planning Act, um, such as like your impact to schools and your impact to air quality and your light and shadows and noise and fire mm. access and all those sorts of things. Mm. So the skill set then, if we start to focus on that for a moment, uh, I suppose in all of these locations, I'm gonna guess in some, some elements of it, like being a people person and listening and things of that nature, aren't that different, but the knowledge areas might be different. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, I think the skill set of being a planner is 
pretty similar um, in, uh, through all of my experiences. Mm -hmm. I think the context in which you're doing it within can change a lot. And so then you have to learn context specific information. Um, every place has different words for the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so keeping those words straight uh, and then the order and the process that things happen in, um, but the skills that you need, I think those are the same. And, and the, the key skills uh, that you would say in, in, uh, in and I, guess, I suppose part of it is, again, San Mateo, you mentioned is, is roughly 20 planners for a population of how large? Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, and I know you mentioned I me, mean, there's large urban centers and small, so it's, I'm sure it's very diverse, which, uh, which adds to it. But, but this, the key skill sets that you would, would be applying there, things like an official plan, uh, are, are they called official plans or called something different? They're called general plans. Okay. Um, but yes, they're, they're something you look at in your decisions. Um, you, I think project management across the board is an important skill set. Mm -hmm. Um, facilitation for your public meetings is an important skill set. Uh, being able to see those big policy pictures and translate them into the specific, you know, small project that you're working on and how it fits in with that, and mm. as well as any political objectives that may be happening. And if you think of your experiences in the various geographies you've worked in, is there one favorite project that you have or something that was most rewarding for you personally? Hmm. I think the most personally rewarding was probably the Hurricane Sandy recovery work because we became very close with the families that had been affected by the Hurricane Sandy. Um, and at the point I was working on it, it was five years after the hurricane had happened. So the people who were still needing help to move on were people who were not in great circumstances. Um, Part of the project was that we were taking houses that had been damaged and were to the point where they were unlivable and mm. finding somewhere else for those people to live while then we did whatever we were going to do with the lot, either rebuild it to be hurricane compliant dwelling, uh, turn it into affordable housing or turn it back into wetland. Mm. Mm. And one specific family I remember working with um, they were on the rental assistance program, which is in the US is called Section 8. It's a federal sort of subsidy for rental assistance. And it was a single mom with four kids. And they had, because of that, they were, they had to have at least a three bedroom apartment under the regulations. And so finding a three bedroom apartment in New York City that would take this rental subsidy um, was pretty challenging, but we did find somewhere for them to go in the end. Um, and it was, you know, much safer than where they were living before. And so that was, that's one that sticks with me. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I, re I remember um, spending a little bit of time in New Orleans and having a tour of the flooded area there. This was again, two or three years after, maybe three or four years after the flooding that had occurred with Hurricane Katrina there. And I can only imagine that you would have been dealing with circumstances very similar to that in terms of being in areas which were densely housed before, uh, realizing there's only a few houses left. And then the question is, should it continue in housing or should it move into something else? I'm assuming those are the kinds of, of issues you were dealing with. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly so it. This whole process of negotiation and, and facilitation, I can just see that being so key to that, that work. Mm -hmm. Um, any words of advice you would give for students that uh, might contemplate going to the U.S. or might want to go to the U.S.? Uh, any, any, how, what would, what would be your words of advice there? Yeah, um, I would learn as much as you can about where you're going to go because mm -hmm. it really varies by state. Uh, like I said, California has quite a bit of planning legislation. Um, New York is probably second in terms of planning legislation levels. Um, but if you go somewhere, say like Texas, they don't have you know, zoning and they recently um, had a, a new rule that you can't regulate design. So it's a very different context, hmm. um, both legislation wise and also the role of a planner and the value of a planner. Um, 
so like compensation wise, it varies a ton mm -hmm. across the states. Uh, and it's not necessarily related to cost of living. It's more just how valued um, mm. municipalities think planning is. Mm. Just along that line, was your experience is similar to what you would have been paid here in Ontario, realizing there's a dollar value difference there or, or, or more or significantly less? Any general thoughts there? Um, so it's a little hard because when you get into the exchange rate and then the cost of living aspects, but from New York to Ontario, New York, you're less. Okay. Um, the city of New York is where you would be able to get the most, but I'd say it's still less. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as you get out of the city, it's significantly less than that. Mm. Uh, California, is higher definitely higher than new york um i'd say you could probably end up being higher in california than you were in ontario mm -hmm. um i think in from what i've seen in ontario you climb faster but then you sort of max out mm -hmm. where in california is a slower climb but you can kind of keep going mm -hmm. um I've heard also that DC area is fairly good for planning salaries. Um, I would guess the rest of the area is significantly lower than in Canada though. Thank you for that. Uh, any other things you'd mention in terms of skill sets or uh, applying your skill skills, I suppose, in, in U US context? Um, I think if you are going to apply, try and learn the language of whatever they're speaking in, right. in terms of planning talk. I've reviewed applications before from people from different places who were using completely different terms. And while I could figure out what they were talking about, it showed that they didn't do their homework right. and that they didn't really know how planning worked in this local context. Um, I think I have a couple books that I can send you that I would recommend okay. for just sort of overall context in the US. It's a lot more driven by Supreme Court decisions and oh, yes. um, legal aspects than say provincial policy, um, understanding how the plans fit together. In a lot of places you aren't required to have upper level plan conformity. Mm -hmm. And the, the balance of power is really on the local municipalities rather than the province coming down. Right. Right. And just sort of how different bits fit together, like things that are legal in Canada or maybe illegal here and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Well, those are, are great uh, insights into your life and into your role as a planner in those uh, different locations. And I think people will uh, really benefit from hearing what you've had to say, particularly if they're, you know, I think there's, you know, sometimes life takes you to a geography. Sometimes you want to be in that geography. And uh, and I think to have an appreciation for what those opportunities are has been really helpful. And to appreciate as well that the skill sets that we learn in planning, whether it be in Guelph or Waterloo or UBC as an example, that those skill sets are pretty transferable across the border. People choose to do them. One other thing, just maybe to, to, as I think of it, is in terms of membership, I don't know if you had secured your professional membership here in Ontario before you left and whether you've retained that or whether you've had to go through another uh, membership process uh, with a AICP, if I got the initials right in the States, I don't know mm -hmm. where you're at with that. Yeah, so I did um, obtain membership in Canada as an accredited planner before I left. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a reciprocal agreement between Canada and the US in that they will recognize your Canadian accreditation and then you just have to retake the American exam. I see. They get to sort of skip the mentorship work experience part of it. Uh, I would say the value of those are very different. Um, in Canada, you know, it's pretty much required if you want to have a planning job. Um, and you would know more on the current status, but I remember there was some legislation on like right to title stuff going through. Right. Yeah. Um, none of that exists uh, in the US. Okay. I'd say most planners do not have what they call certification, okay. um, especially in the public sector. If you're gonna find some planners that have it, it's usually in the private sector. Mm. Um, like I'm the only one in my office that has it. Okay. Um, and then 
the, it is the responsibility of the planner usually to maintain that, like the membership fees and whatever conferences you want to attend for your continuing maintenance credits, um, you have to pay for those yourselves, where in mm -hmm. Canada, it's often you know, your employer would pay for that. Right, right. So that's, that's a difference. What they test to is also different in Canada. There's a, a hard emphasis on F ethics yes. and professional practice. Um, the American exam was very much like planning history. Okay, okay. And, and I picked up a bit more technical maybe too in, in what yes. you examined on, yeah. Yeah, it was um, like uh, questions about the last census and okay. planning history and different Supreme Court decisions. And it was huh. more of a knowledge test than a professional practice test. Okay, well good for you getting on top of that because I'm sure there would be some uh, certainly some some learning to do on my part if I was trying to understand the history of uh, planning in the U.S. relative to here in this country. So, but I, It maybe helped. I mean, it's hard to say because I, yeah. I would, did that right away. Um, but it, I did have one supervisor say to me that they knew by having that, they didn't know, you know much about Canada or what kind of education I would have in Canada, but they knew that I was at a certain level if I could have that. Ah, well, good for you. Well, with that, I think uh, anything further you want to add, uh, Kelsey? Um, no, I think that's it. it. I'm happy to answer questions if anyone wants to email me. So. Well, that's great. I can pass on your contact information if anyone has, uh, has any questions. And with that, just to say thank you so much. Uh, great to reconnect with you and uh, have your experiences to share with the, with the class. I think they'll quite enjoy listening and learning from you in terms of what you've been through. So uh, let me say all the best and wish you well. Thank you. Happy to. Take care.